Hey, internet, it's David. I don't like when you say internet. I don't like that. Well, what do you say? Hey, y'all. Oh, wait, this is our video on Israel. I got a really good idea. What? Hey, Jew guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's not good. Hey, we got back from Israel. Hold on, not we need a greeting. Hi. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so, one, two. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> it's David and Ellie, and we are doing a quick video. Uh, I say quick. This will probably be a longer video because we have lots of footage and pictures and stories to share with you guys. We just got back from Israel and got to visit all over the country. It was amazing. We weren't there for a tour. We were there to go make friends. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> we had to go to a distant country <laughs> to go to make, make friends. friends. <laughs> There's no friends here. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. San Antonio family, y'all are amazing. And internet yeah, family, friends. you guys are amazing too. Anyway, hey, if they're Christians, they've been grafted into the Jewish covenant, so they are Jew guys. <sighs> okay. Anyway, so we we went with, uh, it was supposed to be our friends that were in a video I did on my channel for an <laughs> FAI screening, and Camille couldn't come, so we went as a couple with our friend Caleb, who's a missionary. He likes to climb things. And he does like to climb things. We have pictures of that. Constantly climbing things. It was really scary. Well, the he, mom and was like, don't do that. <coughs> he is a climber. So. Yeah, he's a professional climber. So. Yeah, pro. Caleb, you're the man. Yeah. Okay, so we go to Israel. We had this planned for a couple months. Um, it was for a conference that a mission organization was hosting on Galilee and Engev on the east side. The missions organization is Frontier Alliance International. They've put out amazing movie documentaries called Sheep Among Wolves. Their newest one is Frontier. Mm -hmm. They've got several amazing things to watch on YouTube that will stir your spirit and make you want to be a missionary or give money to missionaries. And uh, anyway, they, they just do a fantastic job. You should go subscribe to their YouTube channel yes. and watch all their stuff and cry. It's Frontier or just FAI. Uh, I think FAI Studios. You'll see the logo. It's just real F simple logo. It says FAI. And then they have another YouTube channel called Covenant and Controversy. That's no, that's a thing. separate channel, and that's their, that's still the same guys. But anyway, that we went out to go meet them. We saw the Frontier movie when it came out in December, mm. hosted it in our house of prayer, and it was just shocking. It was so good, and I was just so moved by the work that was being done in the Middle East. We won't tell their whole story. We'll just kind of tell what we got to see and a little bit about that, but for real, go check out their YouTube channels. FAI and Covenant and Controversy. If you're not already familiar with them, if you are, go watch more of their stuff. They're amazing, amazing people. It was so much fun to meet them. So we got there a couple days early before the conference, stayed a few days later. We flew in on my birthday. We flew in to Israel. Mazel it was tov. a long trip. It was long flight. It was like 11 and a half hours. Was that right? Yeah, about. It's like 11 and a half hours, which, my goodness. <laughs> funny story. I had one pair of pants and you know like when you're a big girl like me and you have like your thighs are rubbing together on the inside like you kind of blow out the thighs sometimes and I was like man I hope that doesn't happen on this trip and legit like I was on the plane like trying to stretch out and ripped my pants. I ripped my pants. It wasn't that on noticeable. On the plane like <laughs> on the way to Tel Aviv. I was like dang it. So anyway. You want to put that on the internet for all to know? I don't care. Okay. Anyway I ripped my pants. So, <laughs> so we get to Tel Aviv and um, we were so tired and then poor Caleb had to drive to the Golan. <laughs> We went to Golan Heights. We missed Julio. Oh, Julio! Julio! Oh, we did. No, so, okay, take that back. <laughs> so, we actually had lunch with Julio. Julio is our beloved brother. He is my Colombian brother. He lives in Tel Aviv now, and he was our interpreter when we were in Bogota for an, an Ignite conference. And Dave and I helped to equip that church for a house of prayer. And Julio was there and we just absolutely fell in love with him. Julio! Happy birthday! Say hi to YouTube! <laughs> Shalom! 
Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Welcome to Israel. He is just such a sweet man of God. His wife is precious and he has a daughter. They're in Tel Aviv and he speaks like five different languages. And so he speaks, you know, English, Spanish, Kurdish. And um, I think he's in he Hebrew and something else. Some others, I don't know. Some, I, don't I only know. do English, so that's what I'm learning Spanish. I talk with him. So anyway, he speaks Kurdish, so he is working with an organization that takes Kurdish children and they pay for heart surgeries for the kids and host the families, feed the families, drive them around, and, and he's the interpreter. So I think that's such a beautiful work that the Jewish people are doing for the Kurds, like, come on, that is so cool. The Jewish people are so, such good neighbors, and we'll talk more about that with um, the Good Neighbor Project, but we need to, I mean, they're hated by so many people, yet they're helping these people. So after we had lunch with Julio, we drove, or Caleb drove to the Golan, and I had a little Airbnb up there that I had um, what are those Reserve. communities called? They're uh, kibbutz. Kibbutz. No, kibbutz. Kibbutz. I believe it's kibbutz. I think. I could be wrong. I think you're um, right. Yeah. I would, I would be wrong about and that. And so that one was in, it's called Kitzba, something like that. I couldn't remember, but it was so cool. Um, he, the, the Airbnb said there was animal on the premises, and I did not realize it was a goat. You do your goat sound. Right now? Yeah, for the internet. You told them about your pants. Does it come under pressure? Well, feel no pressure, but you better do it. I'm all nervous. Don't be nervous. It's only the Hold internet. On. <clears throat> no, that's not it. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Okay. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> I can't do it very good. The first one was probably the best one. Anyway, I thought they have the a middle one was good. No. They have a goat. We got there, it was awesome. Uh, we, let's see, we think we got there the next day was Shabbat, right? Yeah, because Friday sundown to Saturday we sundown were Shabbat. We got there at Shabbat. We got there on Shabbat. Almost everything shuts down. Depends on where you're it at. Depends on where you're at. So we were there, and then the next day, oh, that's when we did the, we went with Braylon, and we went to the Syrian border, right? And he told us the story of, when FAI, um, how they were able to go in to Syria with their nurses and doctors and offer medical help. So we were able to go to the Syrian border and Braylon just shared with us the story of how they were able to get into the country and how basically there was a project called the Good Neighbor Project and there was a retired Lieutenant Colonel who decided to help basically Syria and there's a bunch of bombings. There's a lot of people who are being hurt. They had the medical supplies, the medicine, but they did not have any doctors. And the Jews were not able to go in because that looks like, what does it look like, treason? It looks like espionage is what he said. It looks like espionage. So the Muslims asked the Jews to send Christian doctors which is such a joke. <laughs> like who who would think that would be possible, but it was, and so they did. So that's when FAI went in with their Christian doctors and nurses. And so we got to see where they went in, like through tracer fire and like, it was intense. I mean, I wasn't there, but it sounded intense how they like, what they had to do. And it was just incredible. It's very inspiring and just made me love these people for, you know, we hear that verse so many times of, you know, we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So often we leave apart, leave out the part that says, and not loving our life unto death. And these people actually do that. <laughs> they don't love their life unto death. And that's super inspiring and, and makes me really think about my life and what I would be doing, what would I be willing to do um, and give up for the Lord, so. That was Golan, it was really wonderful. Yeah, it was chilly. amazing to get up there. So we got, we saw a few different spots that used to be Syria that are now Israel and just got closer and closer to even just a few feet away from the border the and mines. looking over the minefields yeah. and the evacuated UN center. And uh, yeah, the only picture I regret not getting is a picture by the, minefield warning sign we tried to find another one but we just yeah didn't. we thought we would run across it after we drove no. by a couple and we're we like, were ah. seeing them like right after the yeah. next and then, then there's no more we're out of the mine area i guess yeah so but anyway so it was just a shocking experience um 
to actually see the locations that are in the Frontier movie, not necessarily go into Syria, but you could see just a few miles down the road the towns where they worked in that are all filled with uh, Russian soldiers or Al-Qaeda right now. But anyway, it was just so much fun. And then at uh, one of the places where we started out that was probably like five, ten miles, five miles from the border, I'd say, um, they had the best salmon sandwich I have had in my life. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The falafel was good, but the salmon sandwiches were my jam while we were in Israel. It's like a cafe on top of the mountain. We spent a whole day there just (laughs) in northern Israel in the Golan Heights and getting up to the border and hearing the stories of these missionaries. And then the next day, we left our Airbnb and we went to go see some of the historical sites. So we went to Capernaum, which is a biblical site and Jesus taught in that synagogue. I was most shocked by the size of that city. I mean, it's a small city. Like you think of these huge Hold metropolises. On, what are you talking about now? Capernaum. But you didn't talk about the conference? That was before the conference. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 you're right. And so this is on the way to check in for the conference. So during the day and early afternoon, we were going to some of the more historical sites. And honestly, it made my heart a little bit upset. I've since found out other countries kind of do this too, but still, it's just, you're going to this biblical area and you know it's a touristy infested zone when you gotta pay for the toilet. Like, what the heck? You know, here in the touristy spot when you have to pay for the toilet, sheesh, my goodness. Jesus help us. made me a little bit angry. I'm praying, Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus, meaning give me a whip and let me flip over some tables, or in that case, let me flip over some commodes. Anyway, uh, but Capernaum was really nice. Got to just spend some time on the Sea of Galilee. Um, I'm actually glad we did not go with a tour because we weren't rushed along from thing to thing. Yeah, we didn't see everything that there is to see, but the times we were able to stop and pause, we were able to just spend time there and enjoy it and meet people and get to know people. Men can't show their bellies. No midriffs, men. (laughs) And there's no tozers allowed. That's funny. (laughs) In Capernaum, where there was the synagogue, and there's there's like more like it's not the original synagogue that Jesus would have walked around because they've you know, built on top of it several layers. But the tour group, when they left, it was just you, me, and Caleb. And it was very sweet, it had a moment. There was a couple moments that I had in Israel. This was the first one. And it was, we're sitting there on these seats in this synagogue in Capernaum and knowing that Jesus spent a lot of time there and it was empty and I just started singing a cappella, you know, Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary and just feeling the desire of the Lord that we are to be his sanctuary, his holy temple. But in that place, like that has always been his intent and just feeling the pleasure of the Lord in that moment, um, singing in that space, in that geographical space was super sweet. I started crying. It was very sweet. That's all I have to say, but it was, it was awesome. That was really special to me. Yeah, it was a cool moment. Yeah, then we went to what they thought was the Mount of Beatitudes. I actually liked it better when we were just kind of like, it was closed down and we went like on a side road to like all these groves and stuff. And that's when Caleb climbed that ginormous eucalyptus tree. Mm -hmm. So scary. Just I feel like that was a little bit more of a sweet time there than the actual place, the garden, you know, that they they put together. And that was it, right? Yeah, that was it. We just hung out there. And then we drove around Galilee to Engev, where the resort was. Yeah, to meet all the fabulous people. Yeah, and most of the sessions from that conference are online on the FAI page. You should link that in the description. Yeah, I'll just put their stuff in the (laughs) description, just their two pages. But if you go to the FAI page, you can see some of the sessions from the conference. They couldn't do all the sessions because there's uh, missionaries that they want to protect. Yeah. um, And different things that they want to protect, so they can't put everything online. Um, But uh, especially listen to that last session called Allied Around Maranatha. Maranatha. (sighs) Like Mary I had heart Nath, eyes the whole time. Lord Jesus. <laughs> anyway, such a good session. Dalton. Funny story though. Like my YouTube channel is not that humongous. 
and so people usually don't recognize me for my YouTube channel. For his protection, I'm not gonna say his name or who he's with, but he's working in Bethlehem right now, which is in the West Bank, and we met the first night, and he's from Australia, living in Bethlehem, and he's like, and his, you do the Australian accent. He's like, I've seen you before. Your face looks familiar. He, it was that. It's probably so bad. Okay, it's probably bad. I'm sorry, my dude, if you're seeing this. Your accent is terrific. I'm not making fun of it. I just wish that I could we sound wish we could that sound like cool. That. I wish I could sound that cool, but I don't. I just sound like an American bumpkin. Anyway, it's just like your face looks familiar. And so I just threw out like, well, I have a small dinky YouTube channel. Maybe it was from that. And so we put it together. Mount Hermone. I no, it. Mount Hermon was the big mountain. We didn't go on top of that one. Oh. That was the one where the border ran up it. You'll see Mount Hermon. It's the only mountain with snow on it from oh, when we were right. close to the Syrian border. It's close to that though. Yeah, it was really close to that. All right. Okay, so anyway, he had seen some of my Bible reviews and had the John MacArthur Preacher's Bible there with him. And so I just thought that was funny. <laughs> Someone, an Australian working in Bethlehem, recognize me from my YouTube channel. That's the only time someone's recognized me from my YouTube channel. I thought that was funny and a little bit cool and we got to be friends. And so if you're watching, hi friend. Hi. Who I'm not gonna say your name. I asked him before I left like what I can say on the internet and he told me, but I just don't remember so I don't wanna get anything like fuzzed up thing. Anyway, so the conference was so cool. The people in these documentaries, it's we so cool actually to got to meet them, them and oh. hang out with many of them and they're just genuine, humble people that yeah. are flipping people. amazing. And so anyway, we just had such a good time. Sea of Galilee, where we were at, the time of it's year we beautiful. were at, it was gorgeous. Everything was so there green. Was a rainbow. Yeah. The and first the, morning. The sea was so that peaceful. That was another moment. That was another moment, the like waking moment. up and having this beautiful Mediterranean breakfast. And then see, it was raining and then the sun came out and that mm. rainbow was just crazy. One of our biggest takeaways from the trip was we just fell in love with Muslims. Yeah. Like they'll die in their sins without Christ, but we still fell in love with Muslims and just my whole perspective on the stereotypes that I had, even though I was aware of like not being too critical and not being mm -hmm. too, too stereotypical, even just in my knowing that before going and then going and coming back, I'm just, I have a total different perspective. It's funny because like I'm so like American ignorance and just saying shalom to everybody even <laughs> though they might not be Jewish and um whip out a Yeshua and he, shalom. And he was telling me like he was telling me how to say hello in Arabic. So I gathered that oh, he's probably Muslim, but he was so kind to me and he was um I can't remember the exact clan of their their shepherds and they live in tents um and they they cook around a stove this like open fire this open flame bedouin bedouins. bedouin bedouins are the ones that live in the tents cook over open flames and anyway he was a bedouin muslim and he was so nice he was so nice and every morning he was asking me how i was doing i just fell in love with him like he was he was asking me if I wanted, um, our first encounter is he, I was, uh, something about the coffee and he was trying to show me the sugar for the coffee and I would, took three packets and he was like, Ooh, like that's a lot of sugar. And <laughs> he's like, I said, well, you're so sweet. And it was just, he was so kind. And like in the West, we have this idea of like Muslims, like foaming at the mouth, you know, and there are some really hateful people as there are any race and religion, but just, he was just so kind and there's a lot of them just want to invite you into their home for tea and just talk like they just want to talk and so i just really did my heart softened so much for the muslims and especially the bedouin community because they're mm -hmm. just that guy was just so cool so the conference was amazing and oh staying gosh. there at the resort everything was so beautiful good. Um, after the conference ended, it was so sad because <clears throat> now we're friends with all these people and now we have to go back to our own countries and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Thank um, goodness for WhatsApp and Marco Polo. <laughs> yeah. The guy who was showing us around the Syrian border was going to take us to Hebron. And so, or I still say Hebron now that I'm not there. 
It's Hebron. I know, but I'm, Hebron's he, right. Hebron's easier for me to say. Hebron is Hebron. the correct. Hebron sounds funny. I've said it's Hebron he, it's forever. Hebron. Anyway, there was a group of us that were going to drive down to Hebron on our way out to not see each other anymore till maybe next year at the next conference. What a way to wrap it up. I had a hard boiled egg in my pocket and I forgot about it. And so then I started wrestling with my friend and we grappled for a while and then I stood up and I was like, oh, oh yeah, and I pulled out an entirely crushed hard boiled egg. The end. The end. <laughs> We're here to, um, this gorgeous part of Israel and we're on our way to Hebron and we're traveling with a caravan it's really fun we've seen some donkeys and shepherds it's really great Hebron is in the West Bank it's an Arab controlled city but there's a small population of Jews. I think according to their documentary, yeah, there's 700 Jews there, and there's 1,200 IDF that are actually assigned there to protect the Jews. We got pictures with, with them. Yeah, the we IDF. did a, a few of them. They looked like some new guys because they didn't have the cool gear that some of the other guys had. Yeah, I totally missed a moment taking a cool picture of this really macho looking guy. In front he, of the was door. he was sexy. He was super macho <laughs> macho yeah <laughs> anyway and he had all the cool gear and stuff too but tours are not allowed in there because it's such a hostile city um because it's predominantly arab and you have the just the small little jewish community and so you go through a un checkpoint go into hebron 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 and uh it just the Jewish part is so small, but there you have the original stairs to Hebron that Abraham and David uh, would have used. Jesus. Jesus would have used. And it's just in the middle of someone's backyard in this apartment complex around yeah. all these other business looking buildings true. that are kind of run down. And it's just, it's weird for this historical thing to be just in the middle of this. Like, think of going, just walking around the real tight, run down downtown spots of your city and then all of a sudden just finding this thousands of year old historic site with a placard. <laughs> it was just a strange weird, thing. Like right <laughs> across from it. Yeah, and so that was cool to see. Then what else is in Hebron is Abraham and the Patriarch's grave. We also saw Jesse and Ruth's grave there, but where Abraham, Isaac, Sarah, um, Jacob and I don't know how many there but the patriarchs are all buried in this cave and this is the piece of property that Abraham actually purchased from the Hittite in the promised land and yeah. so there's always been a Jewish presence there but it's been such a hostile city and really just encaptures in one small city the uh, the division Tension. and the schism that's there yeah. between the Arabs and the Jews and uh, we heard gun it was gunshots wasn't that gunshots I guess so there was something loud that was like a gunshot, and, we're, and you saw Braylon, who's, who's been there a couple times, he just was like... Well, he just makes sure that no one's pointing anything at you, I guess, and then... <laughs> that part was kind of scary. Anyway, so we were walking through the neighborhoods, and that's where we got the picture. Uh, we each got a picture in front of this turquoise door, which is your color, babe, with the... Uh, Israel star. The Star of David, the Star of David on, on spray painted on the door. Yeah. And so that's where we got those pictures from. We're in Hebron. And you'll see those doors in the documentary if you go through so Covenant cool. and Controversy. Um, anyway, because they do talk about Hebron. 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 So anyway, we walked back through the neighborhoods and then drove up to this building. And in this building is divided by UN checkpoints. You've got the Arab side and the Jewish side. And part of that building was used as the original Wailing Wall before the Jews had access to the Western Wall now. And this building is half of a synagogue and half of a mosque. No other building like it in the world. And right in between is the grave of the patriarchs. And so you can look across these bars and see from the mosque into the synagogue, from the synagogue into the mosque as you have memorialized that grave of the patriarchs. And so we visited both sides. We went into the uh, synagogue and it's funny, um, <laughs> there is this older guy there 
that was talking about the injustice of him being able to, with his passport, go to Afghanistan, but I can't go three blocks down the road because they have the best falafel, but because I'm a Jew, I can't go over on that side, and they have the best falafel. I can go to <coughs> Afghanistan, but I can't go three blocks down the road. And so they don't let Jews in the Arab part of the city. Well, they'll get killed. They'll get killed. And yeah. the IDF, even when we got there, because tours and other foreigners don't, really come there and not supposed to come there they don't let tours there so the idf saw all of us white people and they're like what are you guys doing here they're confused. and so they showed us this map and they're like stay here and yeah. you won't get killed so like okay we only broke the rule once to go to the mosque side of the building and didn't get too much into the city even though fai uh, their guys when they have smaller groups they go into the city and they have folks that they're directly sharing the gospel with over yeah, there yeah that'll invite them in for tea and stuff yeah but can I show the other moment that I had? Yeah, because that's when we went out into the mosque. Well, was I done with the synagogue? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. I almost went oh. into this man's part. By oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was missing. That was when we first learned that the synagogues were divided into men and men women's and section. Women. Allie's walking in, and I'm watching her follow the rest of the guys into this section. Because I'm the only girl. And Wasn't I the only girl? Gail was. Oh, Gail but was. But she was somewhere too. else. She was somewhere else. And so. Allie was walking in, and all of a sudden I look up and I see men's section. I'm like, Allie, 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 Allie. And so... <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> anyway, so that... Now I'm done with the synagogue. So we out-process, go through the UN checkpoint, and uh, visit the mosque. It will probably be the only mosque that I will ever set foot in. Yeah. Uh, I went in with a prayerful attitude, and um, it was an interesting experience. Yeah, I... I don't know, I feel like the Lord just, even in going the whole trip, cause I'm, I'm a highly sensitive person, um, just in general with like sensory things, but also spiritual things. So I feel like there's so much grace for me to go to Israel. Just, I mean, when you go to Jerusalem, I mean, you've gotta be okay with shoulder to shoulder, like crazy. Um, when you're walking around everywhere, just very, a lot of noise, a lot of, you know, there's just a lot going on. So usually that would really overstimulate me and overwhelm me, but there was a grace for it. And then in the mosque, you know, we went in, and I just felt so like in a womb of protection there. And I, the second moment that I had was, just this authority that I, the Lord, you know, I carry an authority, we all do, but the awareness of that authority that you carry and just knowing that, you know what, I'm in this mosque, I'm gonna pray in this mosque. And so I went to the women's side, they did require us to women to cover up, and it was this like pointy hat, it looked really bad, like this thing, anyway. Yeah, it looked funny, it, it looked, looked like a Muslim hospital gown. It was bad. So I was in the women's section and I just started praying for the descendants of Ishmael and just immediately was just overcome with like tears of intercession and was just crying. And I didn't even get to pray for like two minutes and Dave's like, well, where did it go? And I'm just like, huh? Well, our group was going and I didn't want to be left <laughs> by ourselves yeah, somewhere. Yeah, he didn't want us to be cause left. Because I didn't know if this place was going to be like this intricate maze. Yeah, so I'm like weeping and I'm like, okay, I'm coming. But just even in the few minutes that I had to strategically pray in that mosque and that my prayers were weighty in that place and they're still reverberating in that place. And I just was just so, again, just between, just so sweet how the timeline went of feeling that love for the Muslim people and then praying out of that compassion. Yeah. You know, like when you pray from a place of compassion, it's so like strong. That moves the heart of the Lord. So it was really cool to have that. And then I, and I got out of there and we went on to see like the actual yeah. hole where the cave yeah. is. But before you move from that moment, I think it's really cool because I mean, you're part you. Yeah. And so being there as a representation of your people yeah in that land praying for, praying for those who are vocal you. about being your enemy yeah um it's a it was a special moment it's really interesting too you say that because like you know my mom my mama told me about our heritage and my great-grandfather coming from heidelberg and this jewish part that we have 
And I always thought that was just like really cool. Like that's just like a novelty, right? Like, oh, cool part Jewish. But really it was like weighty for me. Like if it came down to here anywhere where if I had to be, you know, separated because of my race, would I stand by that? You know what I mean? Mm. Would I? Would I not? Like, it's just interesting. It's very interesting. What was it that I had to say I wasn't? They told me not to say anything, that nobody was Jewish, right? Yeah, because they don't let Jews in process that side. Yeah, so they're like, nobody's Jewish, So only Jewish, foreigners, right? and, just and like, mm. they let foreigners come because as soon as you go, there's all these people that want you to buy their buy thing because their uh, they're fundraising for their <clears throat> cause and want to share all the injustices. And so both on both sides, there's injustices and have been throughout history. Uh, there's an old man in the mosque that saw we were foreigners in there and wanted to show us around and then let us know why the partition and why it's divided. Because years ago, there used to be no division as far as just the a physical barrier. Yeah. And so you would have Muslim prayers and synagogue prayers that would be able to see eye to eye in the same building. Um, but the reason the wall is there is because there was a doctor in Hebron that was treating these kids that were being killed or severely wounded, just one after the other, day after day, month after month, year after year. And this doctor got tired of treating these kids that were coming into his pediatric clinic. And so he took a machine gun into the synagogue and then opened fire on the people in prayer in the mosque. And so, I mean, again, there's injustices on, on both sides of the aisle. And so they were really quick to make sure we knew that story and that there's injustices done to them just as well. And so that was kind of the big pull I felt from being on the Arab side is they wanted their voice to be heard. Um, just as well so it, it was an interesting thing to me on one side in the synagogue you have this old guy like i can't go three blocks down for falafel and this other guy he still has the memory of this doctor showing up and murdering many of the muslim worshipers there but again i mean the arabs aren't innocent in that city either there's huge massacre of jewish people yeah in hebron as well all over israel yeah and so anyway, it was just a tense, tense spot to be. And that city, probably more than any other city, showed me the importance of a clear articulation and value for the end times and how that's such an important part and in many times the beginning of the gospel when you start discussing it with people. Of uh, There is a king a Jewish king coming to establish his kingdom out of Jerusalem and he's going to correct all the injustices. He's coming to judge and make war, make all the wrong things right and shake everything that can be shaken. And uh, it's, it's just eye-opening and encouraging to see that how the end times is such a vital part of the gospel. Whereas over here in the West, it's kind of like this optional extra for the white hair guys who have the rest of the Bible figured out. And, you know, everyone has their different opinions. So it's like, oh, who can know and, and, and all this stuff. But over, over there, it, it is such an important part yeah. of the gospel. And I <laughs> truly believe like this end time harvest we keep hearing about is going to be in the Middle East and it's going to involve Muslims, Muslims yeah. um, um, in, in a great way. I, there's uh, two harvests in Revelation that talks about uh, the harvest of wrath and, and the harvest of souls into life. And uh, so the prophets pick this theme up and Paul talks about it as well, um, about there being a great apostasy. And I think many times in the West, we've been set up for the great apostasy where the great revival, the fertile soil really is in the Middle East and in some of these Eastern countries and in Southern countries in South America and in Africa. And so anyway, just be aware, I, be sober, but uh, over there, like end times is not an optional extra. It's an important, important part of the gospel. And uh, we definitely saw that probably more than any other place there in Hebron. Do you have anything to add about Hebron? No, it was... Um... It's just not the place to go as far as, you know, <laughs> we came back when we left we Hebron. We got... <laughs> sent to the side and they wouldn't let us through because there's a UN checkpoint to get back to the Jewish side they're like who the are thing. you who why are you here did you meet any Palestinians 
Did you take something from any Palestine? Did you buy something from any? Like, we had our luggage in the back too. Cause yeah, we were, like, like going from... there's these three white people in a car full of suitcases. <laughs> so they were so. very, very suspicious of why we were in Hebron because we just, you just don't go to Hebron. Like you really don't, like not many people go. So they were very suspicious and we got held up for a while probably 45 minutes at least, and then finally they let us go. And then we had to wait for our friend behind us yeah. to get through. <laughs> to get through, So that, and then after that we went to Jerusalem to yeah. check into our other Airbnb, which, which was, was so cool. This was kind of fun. getting out of the intense spots from the Syrian border, Hebron. Um, we still had some intense moments, more probably out of ignorance than anything else. So yeah. it's just we'll so there. cool. Like, yeah, we'll get there. But uh, I remember meeting uh, one particular Jewish man when we were in uh, Jerusalem visiting and just getting to know people and talking with them and spending money on what they sold. And uh, we, when he found out he went, to, we went to Hebron. He started getting teary-eyed and just looked us in the eyes. And he's like, "Thanks for visiting that." There were a now, why did he thank you like that? Because not many people go. Because they see the touristy spots and all the places where Jesus walked and the place that where Jesus the places walked. that have been sanitized and cleaned up and and all this stuff. But uh, no one goes to dirty Hebron, where it's a risk to go there, especially <laughs> like if you have a rental car. Because sometimes they oh, throw yeah. rocks at they, your cars. They, the, the kids, the Palestinian kids, are told to throw rocks at any Israeli uh, plates, plated cars. Yeah. So that's... But we that's were okay. We were okay, yeah, yeah. The Lord was with us. Yeah, those gunshots were weird, but okay. But yeah, we went to Jerusalem, and we got there at night, right? And so then we kind of... Kind we, of. It, yeah, because... The sun we, was going down. We saw, saw a little bit before the sun went down. And we had an Airbnb in Nachalat, which was like one of the first neighborhoods built outside of uh, the old city um, because it was getting too big. And um, there's the Shuk that's right by where we were staying, which the is this market. huge market that was so much fun. And they had a really good falafel yeah. pita sandwich type thing there. And that's what we ate that first yeah. night. That whole day, driving from Engev to Hebron, and seeing the walls for sniper protection, and then from Hebron back to Jerusalem, there is a clear delineation. In the next days, walking around Jerusalem, there's such a clear delineation between where the Arab areas are and where the Jewish areas are. Mm -hmm. um, between just being clean and well put together and taken it's care of, manicured, everywhere. or yeah, or trash everywhere. And it's just, it was very clear which side was which and where you were. And you hate saying that, but it's just, but that's it's, the it's fact. The like, it was just the fact. Every time we were in like an Arab area, it was very dirty. There was trash everywhere, just unclean. It, it, unclean in the sense that there's just, it wasn't clean. And then in the Jewish areas, everything was nice. They, like even the Shook, even though it's an outside market, they they sweep those streets with like soapy water and they're like sweeping stuff and putting mm. trash away. Um, yeah, so it, their market was different than way the, different. Um, the market on the Muslim side. The market on the Muslim side, it's just everyone's like screaming Gross. at you. And I don't know what everyone's saying. It just sounds like those videos that you hear of people screaming in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just a very chaotic time. And we've got one video of it, but it even got narrower and yeah. darker than that as you go didn't into it. didn't change my just, heart for the Muslim No, people. I still love them. We it still, was just an interesting observation. It was just really weird being in it like that. Um, the night we got there and we were walking back from where um, a uh, clergy guy was letting us park at a ministry that he works for. And so we were walking back and there's this music and dancing in the streets. Apparently he's like, oh, this is special. This doesn't happen this much. So when a synagogue saves up enough money to actually hire a scribe, it takes them a year and they scribe out the whole... Torah? Uh, Torah is just the first part. And the whole like Old Testament, what we would call the Old Tomb. Testament. Yeah. Anyway, so 
that's all scribed out. It's all like this big kosher scroll. Huge scroll. And so it's completed. And so they were having a party in the street because it was being delivered. And there was just so much dancing and joy. And it was so much so fun to awesome. see because I feel like that's what's going on on the inside of me when I get a new Bible because I get new Bibles a lot. <laughs> And that was another moment where I was praying while they were dancing, like, Lord, reveal your son in this Torah, in this book, in, the, in their book. Like, reveal it. Open their eyes to see. I did, there was these intercession points in, that I had, um, mm. and that was probably, like, the third one. Yeah. So. It was so much fun. It was very fun. fun. It was such yeah. a treat, because it only happens, like, once every two years or something. He said that was a very big treat for us to see that. Yeah, it, it was a treat, it was so cool. And uh, I finally, I asked one of the guys I met the next day, like those big hats, like what do those hats mean? And it, they don't mean anything particular, it's just like a joyful celebratory type hat. They actually cost like three or $4,000. <clears> so it's like a big deal if you wow. get a hat like that, like you're the bee's knees. And so. You sure was it three or $400? <coughs> no thousand wow. wow yeah because it's some type of special fur thing and it's got to be like hair sprayed out the wazoo so it stays stiff i don't know what they keep it together with but i don't know so saw that and then the next day <laughs> yeah <laughs> we took the train to the damascus gate not knowing that that was the Arab quarter and the Arab... No, we knew that. Oh, we did? Yeah, we knew that. It was a oh. lion's gate we didn't know about. Oh, I forgot to remember. Well, I just forgot to remember, so I was kind of... No, I knew it was the... Deme I knew that was So we it. go in the Damascus gate, Arab quarter, and it's funny because I'm walking into Old City and you have this beautiful gate on the Old City wall and you're thinking like, man, this is gonna be amazing. And then all of a sudden, all this swag everywhere and toys everywhere. And you walk Cell in and then all covers. of a sudden, just like everyone's yelling at you. And it's like the worst mall experience in the world. And, and they have their angry priestly people like over the intercom, like saying their messages for the week or whatever. <laughs> I have no idea. They just sound I'm just really like, angry. I went from this this beautiful gate to, oh my gosh, the chaos is shocking. Like... <laughs> we were just focused and walking through there. Mm -hmm. and uh, You did get an I Love Jerusalem shirt. I did, so though. while we were still on the Muslim side, there's a guy who had some t-shirts that caught my eye. And so you might, if you're on my channel, my last two videos, I wore my I Love Jerusalem shirt, like in gray, instead of like the I Love New York that shirt. It's just the I Love Jerusalem shirt. Cause mm -hmm. I love Jerusalem. Like it has like that land and that people has really gripped my heart in a great way. The Lord really answered a prayer for me. I, uh, a couple years ago was in a messianic synagogue and they had people come up for prayer. And my prayer request was, to the rabbi there, I'm like, I get theology about Israel and why it's important. I see it in the scripture and it's clear to me, but I wanna feel it. I wanna feel the theology that I know. And I feel like this trip, the Lord really answered that prayer because I can't get out of this like melancholy feeling for Jerusalem. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to go anywhere. I, I love it. There's, I have joy for mourning. Like I'm mourning for the land and it, I'm happy about it, so it's so cool. Um, so I got an, the I Love Jerusalem shirt there, and then we were walking, and then it started, like the shops started getting cleaner, and it was just a whole different section of the city. And started coming light. from this like, open air, because everything's closed, and they've closed it off. Like yeah. it's all dark, and you can't see any light. Like you can see little glimmers of light through this number but then it started kind of clearing up and then that's where we kind of entered 
more of the... Yeah, I don't know if we got any pictures of inside that part of the market, was, like the bowels of the, the city. I got the big meat <laughs> hanging. <laughs> the big meat? Okay, then maybe you did. <laughs> I got one picture. I was just focused on Huge getting out of there. Huge chunks of meat hanging. It's funny. There's guys playing chess all over the place, and our friend Caleb pointed out that uh, Mohammed had forbidden chess for whatever reason. Maybe it's association with the Crusades. I don't know. I don't know, but... Um, <clears throat> Anyway, so you have all these Muslims playing chess now, these rebels. Anyway, saying anyway a lot. Mm -hmm. So right. then we went to, and, and what caught Dave's eye was, um, we saw some, like, there were some ruins that they had uh, excavated. We saw that a little bit. And then uh, we saw some paintings, some artwork. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I might even do just a whole yeah. separate video on my channel yeah, on, let's the, wait for on that. the artwork. But the imagery of this one painting, I just have to get the one. Okay. His name was Yehoshua, right? Wiseman. Wiseman. Yehoshua Wiseman. His imagery in his paintings was so like, oh my gosh, you're right there. You're right there. <laughs> and um, so it was really beautiful to get to speak with him. This is just the one that stopped me in my tracks. Um, because the mistake we make about thinking of heaven is like it's just this ethereal like out there somewhere spirit mystic -y, and like it it has no real substance to it um, when really I'm not gonna teach on heaven in this video but the difference between heaven and earth and the Bible is heaven is invisible because iniquity has clouded our vision and also that heaven is up every time heaven is referenced it's just referenced up, up. Jesus lifted his eyes up to heaven when he was praying and so Show them the picture. Um, this picture shocked me while we were watching. Oh, I, can you see it with the glare? Yeah, I got the glare out. Where you have the heavenly temple and the earthly temple, which is just a pattern of the heavenly temple that's associated with the New Jerusalem. Anyway, he's got some other really cool paintings, and so that stopped me. And I was so moved by that painting that I got my phone out, and I was just going to take a picture of it. He got in trouble. <laughs> she knows how bad that is, so I kind of know so what bad. artists think about that. But I didn't see anyone. I thought it honestly was just an exhibit. No. And so <clears throat> I was taking a picture, and here comes this Orthodox guy with the curls, and he's like, hey, can I help you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, we s I stayed there. We stayed there probably three hours. Yeah, because I met Azriel next door, yeah. who was a scribe, and my whole thing is like, I'm a scribe! And so I had him do a piece of parchment for me with my favorite verse, and that was really fun. Yeah. With Zephaniah 317, he's like, I didn't know this was in the Bible. He's like, you know more of the Bible than I do. And I was <laughs> like, and he was telling me, what's this? What's this? What does this mean? And like, he was reading it. I was like, isn't that cool? Like, God does that over you, like, Azriel? Like, he's singing over you and spinning over you, and he's rejoicing over you, and he's like, wow. <laughs> he was he was just really taken with that scripture and I that was another intercession point as he's scribing it out I was praying for him specifically yeah. um, for him to to encounter the living word through that written word yeah so him the scribe and then the painter shared the kind of a, yeah. a same shop that they had a door in between and they knew each other and so she's talking with the scribe I'm talking with the artist and I just had so much fun hearing the imagery behind so many of his paintings that yeah. I'm just like, wow, this is the kingdom of heaven that you're painting. Yeah. And uh, I'll get, I'm, I'm going to just have to do a video yeah, on his paintings long. and stuff. It's so cool. So I'll do that later on. But uh, it was just such a pleasure to meet those guys. Um, they were thankful too, especially, is it Azrael? Azrael, yeah. Thankful too that we had went to Hebron. That just seemed to be a common thing when... The locals in Jerusalem found out we went to Hebron. We're very thankful. Joshua in particular as well. He actually was one of the few Jews that used the Damascus Gate on purpose to make sure that He's there's a chutzpah. Jewish presence. Yeah, chutzpah. 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 And so he, he uses that gate on, on purpose. And he's not like a big intimidating guy either. He's a little skinny guy. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, anyway, it's just his convictions to keep using that gate so yeah. that there's... A Jewish presence, presence over yeah. there as well and all of his th friends think he's crazy which is good they thought Jesus was crazy too yeah <laughs> I didn't tell him that. I like him <laughs> but I did ask him I got him thinking about Melchizedek I asked him yeah. towards our the end of our time as soon as you mention Jesus or New Testament immediate walls go up yeah. and no one wants to talk to you nobody you're crazy even the children think you're crazy you're crazy the yeah, kids so, that we met <laughs> uh, 
Jesus has a lot of names, and if my big goal, I wanted to have one conversation with Melchizedek with a Jewish guy. And so here's the guy with the curls and all this stuff. So I thought he would know who Melchizedek was. All the paintings were just amazing. So I'm like, he's got to have something on Melchizedek because the Dead Sea Scrolls actually look to Melchizedek as the Messiah who sets up the kingdom in Jerusalem. Um, so that's like Second Temple Judaism stuff that guys like John the Baptist would have studied. Um, that came after Ezra and Nehemiah. And so I asked him, like, do you have anything that captures the imagery of Melchizedek? And if you're familiar with the book of Hebrews, it points to Christ being our high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So I'm trying to, in this secret way, point him to Christ and make him hungry to dig in the word. So I'm like, do you have anything that captures Melchizedek imagery? And he's like, who's that? I'm like, what? You don't know who Mel okay. Melchizedek? And he's like, you mean... Um, one of the kings from Genesis with Abraham, I'm like, yeah, but not just like a king, like priest of the Most High God, and Abraham tithed to and this man. And he went and grabbed his And he's like, what? And off. so we looked at Genesis 14, and I'm like, yeah, this priest who was a priest before Aaron and the Levites? And he was like, his wheels were turning. He's like, huh. And so I shared the Dead Sea Scroll thing with him, and he's like, I need to read about this guy. I'm like, yeah, let me know when you do a painting of him. <laughs> and so it was so neat to have time to spend with the locals and some of these shop owners mm -hmm. and especially just have time to stop and pause and appreciate this guy's artwork because mm -hmm. he's so close. I'll do another video yeah. on him later. We'll move on. And so anyway. So we went to the Wailing Wall. Yeah, that was uh, interesting because you come out of the corner on the Jewish side to go into the UN checkpoint. It was just a security checkpoint. Okay, just a security checkpoint. Yeah. Sorry, I'm so used to everything being a UN checkpoint there. Um, so you go down to the checkpoint and you immediately see the dome on the rock. It was already late and so we went to the Wailing Wall and spent some time there. And I didn't get it then, but they in all these synagogues they have these little yarmulkes. They're like the freebie yarmulkes that you put back when you're done. And so every time we travel, I really try to like be as local and not awkward and like foreign as possible, even though my accent causes me to stand out. Just be confident with my accent and act local is my strategy. And so um, I did pick up, because it's courtesy for Gentiles to wear a yarmulke. So I got a little yarmulke for when I visit synagogues and stuff. And uh, anyway, so there was a synagogue that you can go into the side of the Wailing Wall. You see pictures of it. There's this little cave. And then back in there, there's all these guys praying in these uh, pockets with uh, libraries and books all in them. I have no clue what they said, because it's all in Hebrew, and I don't read Hebrew. But uh, it was just a cool experience. Did you have anything to share on that one? No, we we went to the Wailing Wall and then we um, went out the side. We, we saw David, where David. Um, yeah, we went out the Z Mount Zion Gate. The Zion Gate. The Zion Gate is that what it was? And we went and visited where they, where David's tomb was. It his tomb. Yeah. And where they thought his temple, his the the tent was. But I don't know if that was accurate or not. Yeah, one of the guys there thought that the tent, the Tabernacle of David was there. And there's another site that we didn't have time to go see where they say the Tabernacle of David was. But either way, I'm sure David was well, around was both those singing. places. There, the guys were singing, and this is my other moment, is that I just wanted to sing in that place where David's tomb was. And I, I'm not super weird with like, I've heard of things like grave soaking and weird stuff like that, but I do think it's, there's something interesting about being in a place where someone's been buried and everything. It's just geographical locations again. So I was like, I want to sing in this place, especially if it, if it was, you know, like the tent of David. So I'm singing and I keep getting shushed by, by a guy. And the wall, like there's a wall separating. And apparently ladies aren't apparently supposed to sing. Ladies aren't supposed to sing, talk nothing. Like you can be quiet, like, you know? So I kept, I got shushed a couple times. But that's okay. It was still fun. And then I left. Yeah. No one took your birthday away. No. Or my voice. So. And her EP is still on iTunes. Yeah. So. True Food by Ellie Brown. So that is that is my fun. That was fun. And then we went out of there. And then I think we were trying to find. We went to the, saw the Mount of Olives. It was really sweet to see it like at night. Yeah. And so the sun was setting. And huge hill. Oh my gosh. Shabbat speed up yeah. the hill. So we're walking downhill 
from the Zion Gate towards the Mount of Olives, and we're trying to get to <clears throat> the Garden of Gethsemane because we're wanting to see all the sights that we wanted to see. Um, but we didn't make it to the garden in time. The sun was setting, the sun went down. Um, while the sun was setting, uh, you had the Muslim call to prayer going out from, I can't remember what the name of the mosque is, but the Dome of the Rock there. Alaska. Yeah, Alaska. and then you could hear other people in other cities on other hills praying, and you could actually hear the city and the other hills, the Muslims there praying and singing together and it was just such a dissonant, atonal sound that just created like so much tension. It was just like, uh, it was like this moaning and this groaning coming up from the city while we're walking in the valley and you're just kind of surrounded by all these high places that are releasing this moaning sound. And it was just a interesting experience. <laughs> We walked up the hill. Yeah, so. And that was crazy. And then we went back home and everything. Yeah, and then we then found out that the garden was closed. And yeah. so we had already walked around a good portion of the city. And so we went from like... the Jewish quarter to the Christian quarter where Gethsemane and some of the bigger uh, traditional churches are and the Catholic churches. I walked over 16,000 steps that day. Yeah, you it walked a lot, a lot of lot steps. Of <laughs> but we had to get back to the Damascus Gate to get on our train. And so we just now walked all the way around the we're wall. We're in the Arab quarter, like at nighttime, and walking around the wall and just not paying attention to anyone, just like pressing through. Different vibe over there. It was dark and it felt eerie. Yeah. But we went home and I think we actually did we eat at the falafel place again? Where did we do that? Yeah, night? I think so. And Probably then falafel, the yeah. next day, we Dave and I had an opportunity to go on our own. Caleb was gonna try out some climbing gyms, and um, I had to go take back a charm for my mom that I bought her, and repl and I switched it out for another charm. She wanted the high, the high charm, and then we went to the Garden of Gethsemane. I was walking through, and it's all closed off. You can't get in. Uh, it's just got a little fence around it, and there's all these trees, and there's this really big old olive tree. And there's this man who walked past me. He's like, you like the garden? I was like, yes. He's like, I'm the gardener. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was just kind of like, you know, trying to step away slowly because I don't know who this guy was. I was like, I don't know about this. And so um, I was like, oh, that's nice. Um, and then I'm thinking to myself, man, my daddy wanted a rock from the garden. And I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna get like everything within like an arm's reach, like people have picked up, basically. Like you really have to like, ugh, if you wanna get anything. So I'm like, you know what? Or, or make friends with the gardener. I figured, you know what? If he's really the gardener, that's now my only way of getting something. So I was like, oh, so you know this gardener? And he actually, his name's Faiz, and he's like super nice. And he was the gardener, and he lived in the apartment above the garden. And um, he's been tending the garden for 22 years. And his dad before him, it was like 42 years, right? 42 years, his dad. And then before that, his grandfather, three years is when they started it in the family. And um, he doesn't have a son yet. He desires to be married. I mean, we talked a long time. So ladies, we have his phone we number. We have his phone number. <laughs> he, he WhatsApps me. Um, and so we, he was just super nice. And it was really fun to talk to him. It was so sweet. He, he says, I live in that apartment. He's like, you see that gate? And it was overlooking the Golden Gate that the Muslims have bricked up because um, <laughs> Jesus is supposed to walk through that gates, but of course, you know, the bricks are gonna prohibit him from doing that, whatever. So anyway, yeah, Luke, he walks through walls. He walks so. through walls. That's not gonna hinder anything. It's just funny. So anyway, um, Faye said, you know, I see that gate. He's like, Jesus is gonna walk through that gate. I'm gonna get to see it. And it was so sweet. And um, he said, uh, he's like, everybody wants something from the garden. 
and um, we're like, yeah, I want something from the garden. He's like, go inside, come out in 10 minutes, I'll get you something. And so I was like, okay, well, let's see if this guy's for real. Like, you know, like if he really does have the key, cause he's like, I have the key, basically yeah. like dangling the key in front of me. And so I was like, like okay. can you open it up and let us go frolic? I know, so he, so he went in, got to see the beautiful church. I came out and the tourist people had to leave because they didn't want, and he's in there. He's in there with the little rake thing, kind of, and he has a bucket, and he's like, come here. And I go in, and after he's like- After the tour left, it's all the, super sneaky. Yeah, after the tour left, and he's like, open your bag, and he's like, he's like hiding stuff. And he gave us a piece of, the tree, the two over 2,000 year old tree, and he gave us a couple rocks. So I have one and my dad has one from the soil, not like the pebbles from the walkway. And then he gave us three olive branches. So I have an olive branch and my dad has two of them and he is cloning them. Faye said that there was, he showed us this little tree that was in the middle of the garden and he said, I took a branch from the big tree and I planted it. So he cloned a whole tree from just a branch of the big tree and it was four years ago that he did that. So that's what we're doing. We are cloning these branches to get a whole new tree. So we will have a tree from the oldest tree in the garden of Gethsemane. The tree that saw Jesus sweat drops of blood. Yeah, that tree. So it's just the favor of the Lord was all over this trip from getting to see the Torah come or the, the, the holy book come and getting to see, you know, go to Hebron with someone who knew the place and then getting to meet Faiz. It was just so cool. That was such a fun time. And um, he wanted to like give us so much more things. He's like, I have oil for you. And I'm like, we can't go to security with it because we all were packing like uh, carry-ons. So next time, he's like, next time. I was like, yeah, next time. So we met him and then we left. And then this part was the part where we were so ignorant. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had heard when we got there about the Aus what Austrian hospice? The Austrian hospice, yeah, hostel. Hostel. Hostel hospice, yeah. If you can, you can pay. It's a very secret thing, kind of still. Not anymore. Here you go, Not internet. Not anymore. Um, but you can go in, and the doors close. You ring the door, they let you in. And you go up to the roof, and you can pay to get a roof view of the old city. Yeah, and that was really cool. And so we Google mapped it to find the quickest route there because we had to get on the train before Shabbat, Shabbat happens yeah. at sundown. And so we were running, like Shabbat walking speed. at Shabbat speed because everything's fixing to close. And yeah. if we don't make the train, then we got to walk back to our hotel. <laughs> yeah. And so. The quickest gate was the Lion's Gate. And <laughs> it happened to be right after Friday prayers from the mosque which is like mega church. It's like Muslim mega church just got out from, and there's like droves of people coming down this road down out the lion's gate. And we just now realize this, like apparently some people who we told that we did this, they're like, what? Why did you do that? That was so stupid. And we didn't know that like they're praying for the day of rage. Like, like and the message is on killing, the day of rage. like the day of rage, like killing Christians and Jews. So no wonder they were so angry at each other and honking at everything like when they were coming out. Yeah. And it's again, these things aren't made up like they're really praying for the day of rage. And so again, there's this like authority thing on me. I'm normally not like this. But, but we didn't like, know this then. We no, just knew no, no. the mosque got out. Yeah, we didn't know. We didn't know about this day of rage thing and like this was dangerous. I was so ignorant, but the interesting thing was, is I felt again, this like authority thing where I'm just like, I'm putting my head down and I'm going through this crowd. Like, <laughs> like swimming upstream it was, and uphill. It was crazy, uphill, upstream, like all these people coming and we're just like, I'm just going for it. And we didn't get stabbed or kidnapped, which was amazing. I think everyone was just mostly mad that we were in their way. I don't know, but. I was nuts. And then towards the beginning, the opening, we did see the IDF all on the rooftops and stuff. But yeah. apparently that was really stupid what we did. <laughs> so Anyway, but we did do it. That. It was fun. Yeah, it was a good right. memory. We, we did that together. Yeah. And then we finally <laughs> found the rooftop of the Austrian, Austrian hospice. hospice. Yeah, which was beautiful. And um, so we made it back to the train. 
went back, got to go to the Shook and get some things for sh before Shabbat. And then you had the Shabbat police. He was, <laughs> he was one of my burp, favorite parts burp, 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 of the trip. Burp, burp. Yeah. Blowing his trumpet kazoo at everyone. And he was going from shop to shop. Yelling at people. As the sun was getting close to being setting. The sun was get. However, I said that. Whatever. The sun um, was setting. The sun was setting. And he's going from shop to shop, like blowing his kazoo and just yelling something in Hebrew at everyone. Um, and it just. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know their culture, but it, to me, it didn't sound friendly at all. It's just like, <laughs> and then go to the next door, and just we called him the Shabbat police. Shabbat police. He was so cute. So he's from a neighborhood around here called Bay of Sherry. Celebrate. Yeah. It's mandatory. Anyway, it was funny. Hurry up and celebrate. And so, anyway. And then if you do go back again, if you go um, right before Shabbat, there is a guy named um, Machles. Yeah. Machles at the Western Wall who collect, who will gather in people who are foreigners, basically, who don't have a, a family to, to celebrate Shabbat with and takes them to his place. And there's like a hundred people from all over like celebrating Shabbat. So it's really cool. Next time I want to do that for sure. Yeah. Now that we know where to go. Mm -hmm. But the train will be closed, so we'll have to figure out something. We'll figure we'll it out. We'll figure it out. But we went through the Lion's Gate when we did. And so <laughs> the mosque uh, got out. And so after that, we came home and just had a quiet evening. We found a, a small place that sold food like. 15 minutes before they closed and I just got Captain Crunch and milk. That's right. We went and got, you got cereal and I got like crackers yeah. or something. <laughs> Parker's looking at me funny. He's like, Captain Crunch? And then the In Jerusalem? Next day, the next day we <laughs> yes. had to go. We had to leave. Which was super sad. Yeah. And it was a 12 hour plane ride going against the headwind. I wore stretchy pants that time. I miss it terribly much. I was melancholy all week until I saw our church family again. Yeah. I'm just like, that's what makes San Antonio home. Yeah. But I still miss Israel. I think there's future purposes for us. Us going down there to meet the FAI crew, I think is just the beginning of what the Lord's going to do to connect us, our house of prayer ministry here in San Antonio, um, with what's going on in the Middle East, because I definitely have a burden for it now. Before, I'm just like, I didn't care about the Middle East. I cared about Israel because the Bible told me to, so I did by word, but I just, now I feel it all, and I'm just like gripped for the Middle East, for the harvest of Muslim, Muslim souls, for yeah. the kingdom of God, and for the Jewish nation to really accept her Messiah. Paul talks about in Romans that when they accept Jesus as their Messiah, life from the dead for the whole earth happens and a nation is saved in a day and so anyway just like anywhere people who really are searching for truth will find it and so you have these muslim people who a lot of them are just kind of stuck in their ways their religion their rhetoric whatever but you do have people who think who are who are thinking about what's right and um what's true and so just to hear the stories from the people who are doing work in uh, northern Iraq, there was a beautiful story of a couple there who have befriended a Muslim couple, and um, they're Muslims, you know, but they showed such love to this couple when they went through trauma and tragedy. Just the fact that um, I don't know if I can share the story. I don't. I don't want to take liberties to do that, but just like the beauty of this Muslim couple showing such love to this Christian couple. I mean, so, I mean, it, it does happen. And so I'm just so thankful for my heart being soft and um, for the Lord doing that work in my heart. I never was a hard person towards Muslim people at all. I, I definitely had compassion, but I mean, I really feel it now and um, just have such a heart and ready for whatever the Lord has. Just a beautiful land. I see why Jesus likes it so much, and I can just feel his jealousy for that land yeah. and for those people. 
uh, we are not the center of the universe over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, that's that's all I have. Did you have? No, I mean, it was a long, that was long. If y'all have made it this long, wow. Yeah. This is like a movie or something. Yeah, the marathon vlog. We need to rename our thing. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for hanging with us. Yeah. If you guys like the music that was playing in the video. You have music that's this, this long? No, but I can put a bunch of tracks together oh, okay. from different albums. All, right. all available at forloveoftheword.bandcamp.com. <laughs> that link will be in the description. Also, I'm taking the reading of the King James that I read, combining it with my ambient guitar squishiness, and creating an ambient guitar King James audio Bible, if that should, should so interest you. That's it for now. Thanks for hanging with us, and I hope you enjoyed the footage of the land and all that stuff. We had such a great time and hope to be able to make it back next yes. year for the FAI conference. Please, if you don't click on any of the links but one, go subscribe to the yes. FAI YouTube yes, yes. channel and learn about what is happening right now in the Middle East with Muslims and with Jews. It's beautiful. amazing. It's so beautiful. Y'all have a good night, day, or whatever, afternoon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> time out internet we're recording this the next day in the same outfits so you think <laughs> that wait i already told you it's the next day it looks bad no it doesn't <laughs> oh my god you get to see gertrude <laughs> this is the intro within the intro so we realized that we forgot we had this moment of what did we do on shabbat and i mentioned captain crunch but I forgot what happened after Captain Crunch, and I can't believe I forgot because... I look bad. No, you don't. You look great. <laughs> because we direct a house of prayer in San Antonio, I can't believe I forgot that on Shabbat, the place that was open was a 24-7 house of prayer that overlooks the city. Sukkot Halal, right? Sukkot Halal? Is how you say it? Halal. There you go. She can say it better than me. And we found the place because there's a guy on my YouTube channel that started messaging me and he was from there. And so we wanted to visit there and we went at nighttime during Shabbat. And so we were so excited. That's so annoying, don't do that. No, it's not, the internet loves it, don't you guys? And so tell us if you love it or not. Slurping coffee, you probably don't. So I would vote, that's annoying if this wasn't my video. But anyway, so we go in to this house of prayer that's 24 seven. It was on one of the sides of the old city Jerusalem, just outside the walls on another hill, overlooking it. The view was gorgeous. We went at nighttime, so the city was just lit up behind us. You and saw the dome of the rock right there. Yeah. All and lit up. so, there's this house of prayer there, praying for Jerusalem. There's a few houses <clears throat> there in Jerusalem and in Israel, but that was just the one that uh, we made a connection with and were able to get out and, and enjoy the Lord with them. But to our shock, we walked in and it was all in Korean, just so random. Korean worship, it was so cool. Yeah, I didn't understand what they were saying, but I felt the fire. It was so it was good, very sweet. and there was this little Korean girl running around like a little yeah, toddler. Yeah, all babies and like everyone... smiles. Yeah, <laughs> she's so cute. Didn't and understand anything I was saying, but she was smiling. She was just having fun, not being distracting, but no. still just having oh, we fun. Do and, in our yeah. house of prayer. And it was just such a fun moment to be there for a Korean worship set in Jerusalem at the house of prayer. Did yeah. you have anything to add for that one? <clears throat> there was this other man there. He was very dark complected. He was like very olive complected. And I don't know if he was an Arab, Arab or Indian maybe, but he just like had so much light. Like he had very dark eyes in color, but like his eyes were all sparkly and shiny. And just like the love of Jesus was just coming out of his eyes. And I just remember he was barefoot and walking around and had his Bible that was a different language on the floor. And I don't know if he was Arab or not, but it was just so sweet to see him engaging with the Korean worship, even though, you know, both we both probably didn't know what they were, I mean, who knows, maybe he did know Korean, but um, 
Everyone knows tons of languages except Americans. Yeah, I'm like learning Spanish now learn because English. of that. Like, I learned, like, one of the things I learned from FAI, which was so, so important. I'm just gonna go on this bunny trail because that's what I do. You know, it's so inspiring to go to the interior of the Middle East. Like, that's like, oh, sign me up, I wanna go, die for Jesus. Like, like you have that thought, and they're like, wait, hold on. <laughs> and, um, so what he was saying is there was a guy who was in Atlanta who I grew up in, in Atlanta or Fayetteville, Georgia, and he purposely moved to the most awful ghetto place in Atlanta to, to be in his interior of his state, his city. And I was thinking about it and it really, the other, another moment that I had was just like how how I've despised where I've lived here in the south side of San Antonio. I've despised it. And it really, I repented. Ooh, I'm gonna get emotional. I repented for it because this is the interior, like the south and the west, like the south-southwest is the interior of our city. It's very harsh. It's a lot of, um, just the orphan spirit, poverty spirit, a lot of hatred, racism. We actually get racist stuff happening to us because we're like the only white people living on the south side. Not the only, but it's very rare. So I actually turned my, my attitude around and just thank the Lord for placing us in the interior at this time. Like we are planning on moving, but Right now I'm in the interior, so I'm gonna learn the language. And so they were talking about learning the language. So I'm learning Spanish and I'm just so excited. I've been learning and the kids are gonna learn with me. And because I have neighbors like Maria, she's my neighbor and she was just lit up when she, we could through like signs and stuff that she realized that I was gonna pray for her because her back was hurting. She needed help with something. She can speak very little English. And so I'm excited to be able to talk with her about the Lord. And um, she's told me, come over and we'll talk in Spanish. And so I just think that was really sweet also. Not only did my heart change towards the Muslim community, but also towards where I live. Like, yes, it's still loud, but I love I love it. I love it now. And um, I'm just asking the Lord what he, what he has for me to do here to show his love, so. That's awesome. So that's what we forgot yesterday so time back in <laughs> with the other video <clears throat> she always finds the cats come on you little Israeli kitty shalom come on come out here come out here sweetie yes you're a good good kitty You're a good kitty. Oh, hello. Hello, I love you. I love you. I love that goat. And I love this kitty. I love that my place has animals. <laughs> All right. We have some Israeli kitty and Palestinian kitty here. They are not getting along, so we just speak peace. Peace to the kitties of Hebron. The kitties. Hi, kitty. Don't and so so many times, okay? Well, I do that instead of um. I really say um. It's better than um. No, it's not. It's and so. No. And so. <laughs> Did I just say and so? No, you said anyway. Anyways, your hair looks amazing in the light, with all the fun colors. You ready? Sure. You look so pretty. 